This next video I actually recorded before Thanksgiving but just didn't have time to get it in the can and get it up there on the on the World Wide Web. Um, and I think it's very pertinent now because we're all uh, going into weather changes. Well, we even have the heat on here in Texas right now. And um, with the dry indoor heating and the very cold weather, most people experience some change and some frustration with the reeds. So I hope this video is helpful to you and we're going to show it to you right now. Hey there YouTubers, welcome to another presentation of Red Knight Clarinet Products. You know, I don't know about you, but in trying to prevent reed warpage, before I found the real causes, I tried just about everything that you could try. For instance, um, I tried sanding the reed, and kind of had little spotty results. I think I overdid it a few times. Um, I also tried, uh, you know, uh, a special uh, uh, methods of, of, of storing the reed and all that, trying to keep it all stable. I, I bought commercial ones and, and then there was some of those, um, you know, special ones I kind of dreamed up myself. They didn't work too well. And then I heard all kinds of things about how the reed should be soaked and, and all that, so I tried soaking it in all kinds of different things and, and soaking it in all kinds of different ways. And I actually found one way that seemed to improve the reed, but it was only temporary. And now that I think of it, it really didn't improve the reed. It was just about after the third one, you just didn't care anymore. Anyway, I tried all these things until I found the real causes, and we're going to talk about that in this video. There are three main causes for reed warpage, and I'll bet you surprised, you'll be surprised at what they really are. Most of us think it's going to be the weather or bad cane or all kinds of things like that. I admit bad cane can cause reed warpage, but a very small percentage of cane is really so bad that the warpage is significant um, due to just that factor alone. I know that the three main causes of reed warpage are unbalance or imbalance in the reed biting, and then the, um, the over-soaking of the flat table of the, of, the, of the reed. Let me explain. When the reed uh, is unbalanced, the response of the reed is not secure. It's often delayed. And also, the sound of the reed is not always clear at all dynamics. And so uh, the player will have to crunch down and force the reed uh, into vibrating properly um, and uh, to clarify the sound or to secure the response. Well, this vertical closure, this biting that is forced by imbalanced in the reed then uh, begins to break down and collapse the reed so the reed begins to warp significantly from the back toward the tip. And that you want to eliminate. And the way to eliminate that is again these two factors are related. The way to eliminate that is to always play very well balanced reeds and learn how to play without biting. And one of these things will help the other. Okay? The third thing is the warpage of the the actual warpage of the flat area of the reed that sits on the mouthpiece. When that bows or warps from side to side so that the reed will rock side to side on the flat table of the mouthpiece, then the whole reed is being pulled away because the middle is swelling up and the whole reed is being pulled off the facing and then you get severe leaks and that will also force a lot of biting and cause the reed to collapse from tip to back. So these, all these things are kind of interrelated and uh, once you, you begin to correct them, sort of turning that vicious circle into a virtuous circle, then you'll find you have less and less and less and less problems with what other people deem or designate as reed warpage. The trick here, uh, as far as I can see, is to, is to make sure that the area that's going to vibrate, that actually leaves the mouthpiece, um, that that is adequately wet. 
okay? Whether you want to wet it with saliva or water or whatever, it doesn't matter as far as I can tell. Uh, but uh, that area has to be nice and flexible and ready to vibrate. And the area that's, that should be uh, flat and sitting on the flat table of the mouthpiece be very nice and consistent, then that area is the area that you want to be as stable as possible. And for me, at least my experience, is that is that um, that works best when I don't wet that area at all. I try to keep that area minimally, keep, keep the moisture away from it. So when I put it on the mouthpiece, um, it's... Uh, uh, it doesn't, it's not soaked full of water. Now, what I mean by, by soaking it completely in the warpage is that when the reed is completely soaked up, as you play it, then the middle of the reed is sitting on the facing of the mouthpiece and very little or no air can get to it. But, the, but as you work out to the sides of the reed, then those areas dry out. And when those areas dry out, they begin to shrink and the middle of the reed then um, it's still swollen and still high, then the reed will rock, not tip to back, but side to side. And this pulling away, this dryness on the side as the reed dries up, it causes all the leak leakage and it's a, real, it's a real problem. So soaking the reed, in my opinion, can be uh, one good key to actually physically keeping the reed from uh, from warping in the area of the flat table where it's very very important that the reed interface properly when the reed interfaces properly there the whole the whole reed itself um, interfaces properly with the facing and the facing curve and then you get very good results uh, but if there's warpage there then the rest of the reed uh, is inconsistently uh, um, inter uh, interrelating to the or relating to the rest of the facing, and it's also uh, it's also leaking, and so you get very very bad results. So you try those three things, and uh, along with your own uh, reed storage methods uh, and the way you normally take care of a reed, uh, try th to work on those three things, and I think if you master those that you'll find you'll have less and less and less problem with reed warpage. You know, I'm sure a lot of you out there are probably thinking right now, like, what? That was a video on correcting reed warpage? You probably expected me to talk about sanding the reed and polishing it to a mirror finish and sealing the reed and and all that stuff, you know, and, and also special storage methods and all that. You can do all those things. Um, I found personally that sanding the reed to a very high polish is very counterproductive. I don't like the sound of the reed when it when uh, uh, that's done, and uh, I don't think that it's conducive to uh, really eliminating warpage, but actually uh, increases it and encourages it. But that's another matter. The main thing here is this, until we understand the real root causes of warpage, uh, then all those other things that we do with reed storage and sanding the reed and sealing the reed and all that, those things are pretty much in vain. They're what I call the camels and the gnats. Well, what we dealt with today in this video were the camels. These are the essential things that cause reed warpage. And the gnats are those, uh, uh, those polishing storage things that you can do and keeping the reed on the mouthpiece, sealing it in a plastic bag, all those things. You can do all those things, and those will be helpful. But if your reeds are not balanced, and if you're, and if you're still biting uh, to get the sound, to, to, to clarify the sound and, and secure response and all that, your reeds are going to be very unstable, and you're going to have a lot of problems. So those are the essential things. Take care of those essential things, those big camels, and I bet you'll find that a lot of the nets just vanish and you don't even have to worry about them very much. So uh, with that considered, uh, thank you for watching. We'll put up another video very soon. We have several, uh, um, several subjects that uh, we plan on putting up and we hope they're helpful to you and as we hope this one was helpful to you. See you next time.